Hey guys, hope everybody's having a great Saturday night. You're probably gonna catch the replay on this because why would you be watching a Facebook Live on a Saturday night? So I wanted to kind of just go over a couple things here uh, that I've had a couple conversations with some agents here over the last few days, uh, past few hours, and just a couple things that I think um, sometimes we're not, like we're aware, but we're not aware of. Uh, I'll give you an example. Something simple like your clothing, what you're wearing out into the field. If you're dressed like an insurance salesman, if you're dressed like a lawyer and you go into someone's home, you go into someone's business, if you're suited up, please do not be surprised if they want to think about it. If they want to go talk to a friend or family member, if they're not ready to make a decision. A lot of times you may have the right questions, you may have the right information, but a lot of times if you are not, if you are not putting yourself in a position for success by dressing, this is something simple here, dressing the right way. So what do I mean? So, so you have to be dressing to not impress but you want to dress so that you are not, um, how do I say? You don't want to make people feel inferior. Is, does that make sense? You don't want to make people feel like I'm dealing with the insurance guy or I'm dealing with a lawyer or not that there's anything wrong with those, that, that type of person, but people will only do business obviously right with people that they like and trust. If they have the slightest inkling, like you're just there to make money and not really to help them, they're not gonna do business with you. And a lot of times we teach what to say, how to say it, your tonality, the questions to ask. I'm gonna give you specific, like I'm not giving like wardrobe, <laughs> I'm not giving wardrobe uh, uh, details here. This is something where if I was an agent in the field and when I was an agent in the field, I would not wear any kind of suit and armor. I would do in the winter time. I think it's appropriate to wear a nice pair of jeans and a button down shirt and a nice watch. I preferred brown shoes over black. Black shoes, they sometimes give the message that you're dealing with a lawyer. And, and I, this might sound absolutely crazy. And again, I'm not trying to give you know, fashion advice or anything like that. I know it works. I've done thousands of policies over the years. And I've experimented with this. And I, I've watched others have a really hard time with this. And a lot of times I broke it down and I figured out, oh my God, it's like, it's what you're wearing in the field. Um, so wintertime, that's good. Summertime, a nice pair of slacks, guys, and a polo shirt with a nice watch and some brown shoes. Lose the black shoes. Women, I'm not going to give you any advice here. I wouldn't know how. I don't know what to tell you. Um, do what's appropriate. Look professional. Uh, you know, you guys have an easier time than, than we do. If you have earrings in your ears, guys, look, again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. What I'm saying is it could be a drawback. Um, so, so that's that one tip right there. Just kind of, you know, watch that and change that. Here's the second thing. Have you ever gotten your car washed? How do you feel after you get your car washed? Do you feel good? Most people feel good after they get their car washed. And so after you get your car washed, you feel good. So if you're heading out into the field for a day of door knocking or a day of appointments, you should probably get your car washed before you leave. Now, obviously, if it's raining out that day or if it's snow, like crazy weather, don't get your, I'm not telling you to get your car washed. What I'm saying is you have to have a feeling of f like feeling good before you go out. I always got my car washed. I, some of these things I know are, that's why I said this in the beginning, some of these things are like, like, where is he going with this? What's he talking about? Guys, these are little things that make a world of difference in your day.
This is for you to make a world of difference in your day. So if you're not going to get your car washed before you head out in the field, get your car washed. If you're working part time and you're doing this after work, my recommendation is take your work clothes off, go to the gym or go somewhere, get changed, and then put your insurance hat on and your, your insurance gear on. All right, so enough about that. Enough about that. Um, experiment with it. I'm pretty sure it's going to make a world of difference and it's gonna help change your business. Okay, no black shoes, brown shoes, lose the suit. Uh, this might even say, lose, uh, uh, was it like, um, like colors, like, like, like an all blue shirt or an all white shirt, don't do that. Have something maybe with like patterns and things like that. I'm telling you, an all white shirt or an all blue shirt with a blue pair of pants and black shoes, you're looking insurance, you're looking like the insurance guy, I promise you. You're looking like the, like the lawyer guy, I'm telling you, you wanna kind of switch it up a little bit, okay? Uh, here's another one. If you are going to talk to friends and family, if you're doing practice appointments or you're, talk, you're talking to friends, neighbors, and family, and you're not getting the app on the spot, remember this. It's not you, it's them. And here's what's happening. You have your friend, you have your neighbor, you have your cousin, whoever it might be, you're explaining it to them. And then they go back and they talk to their spouse. They talk to, they talk to another friend and they tell that other friend, hey, I spoke to, to Doug and Doug was telling me that he's in the insurance business now and he has this program. If I understood it correctly, it's this term universal whole life thing and he says, well, I'm going to have all this money at the end and I, I could probably retire on it. Uh, he says my four, right? And they start regurgitating information that really had nothing to do with what it is that you were saying. And then their friend goes, oh, no, 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 no. No, you don't want to go do that. You need to go see my state farm guy down the street. My state farm guy, he got me $300,000. It's got... Uh, a rider on there that all the kids are taking care of. I pay $7 a month and blah, blah, blah. And now your, your friend, your neighbor, whoever that person is, they're out. And you try to call them and they're, witness, they're in the witness protection plan. They're not taking your call anymore. My advice is have more posture with whoever it is that you're meeting with. Make sure that you're getting all of their information, social, birth date, driver's license info, doctor's information, date of their last medical visit, height, weight. If the last thing that you can't get from them because they don't have it with them is banking information, but it shouldn't happen, especially if you were at last Friday's training, we teach you how to get that banking information. It's also in our YouTube channel on how to get the banking information. Guys, you have to get that information, even if they're gonna take it down on a legal pad. It's, it's like you got an application right then and there, right? Because you're tying it down more. If you release the conversation without getting that information, you have now allowed yourself and your business to go into the hands of someone who is not an expert, who's excited about what you explained to them, but they're not explaining it the right way. I'll give you an example. You could tell someone a story that goes something along the lines of, we handed him the basketball, he dribbled down the court, went up for a layup, missed, got his own rebound, and made the shot. And you told that to someone, whispered it in their ear. It's called whisper down the lane. And then they whisper it to the next person. And by the time it got to the fifth or sixth person, they're like, he ran down the court with a basketball, threw it against the rim. A dog ran out onto the court and then bit the basketball. It's like some crazy story that just kind of like whispered down the lane that is not even somewhere close to the story to how you explained it. Now, is it good practice to be able to ask the questions and do all that fun stuff? Absolutely. Is it a good idea to be able to, you know, uh, practice finding out financial information? Is there money in a mattress? Do you have money in a bank account? What's going on? Tell me about the, yes, that's what we're teaching. All that stuff is good stuff. But if you're not getting the app on the spot, about 95% are going to be hard to reach a second time. And it's because they went and talked to somebody, somebody who's not an expert. You talk to your friend who's a school teacher 
and then they went and talked to the electrician or they went and talked to the plumber or they went and talked to their brother who's a lawyer or their sister who's an accountant and that person has no life insurance license, obviously. They have absolutely zero understanding of how life insurance works. They, they couldn't even tell you what a living benefit is, but they're gonna listen to this person over you because maybe that person has more influence in their life, like a spouse, a brother, or sister. So a couple of, of those tips, I think, are just gonna go a long way as you progress through your career and understand that it's all practice. Every appointment you have is practice. Every person you meet with is practice. Everything that you're doing here is practice along the way. Your first 100 appointments, if that takes you 365 days in 2019 to do 100 appointments, it's all practice and you're going to get better along the way. And at the end of the day, you'll be better off for it. And so just some Saturday night tips. Uh, change the wardrobe. Uh, I, again, I'm not giving fashion advice, but if you're, if you're looking the part, don't be surprised. And if you're not tying down, and if you're not having posture, and if you're not coming from a position of authority, not in like a jerk way, but in a, in a way of, listen, this is my business, this is what I do. I studied to take a test to get life license to be able to do this so I can help you. You know, look, I get it, we're all fired up, we're all excited about the, the new thing that we're doing. We're all excited about living benefits. We genuinely want to help people. We genuinely want to put people in a better position. We genuinely want to see people not get hurt. But unfortunately, we see that and people don't necessarily see it for themselves. So I uh, hope everybody has a nice weekend. Go out there. Oh, oh, one last thing because I got a text message. One last thing. So how do you do annual reviews? Easy answer. You have to go out in 2019 and create hundreds of apps, 50 apps, 25 apps, 150 apps, whatever the number is. And then when you create those applications, like everything that we're talking about, and then you have an opportunity to get them issue paid through underwriting. And then from there, you're doing ERS and now they're on the books. Well, when that client has now gone into month 14, 15, 16, so on and so forth, the, the clients I did today, they were all in month 17, 18. I'm specifically looking for clients that I have in the system that are age 65 and under. Today I was going 60 and under, specifically today, that I, know, that I remember that were in pretty decent health and I'm having a simple conversation. I'm calling them up. Andrew, it's Breck Roseman. I helped you with your mortgage protection, your life insurance and the living benefits about in July of 2016. Uh, do you remember me coming out to the house on a Friday Friday morning at 7 a.m.? And they go, sure, Brett, yeah, no, I have it. Listen, you may or may not remember, I told you I do biannual and semi-annual reviews. Came across your information, did the research. A lot of the carriers sometimes, they're willing to give a better premium rate I noticed here you didn't have any uh, missed months of premium, no lapse pending. If, if, as long as your medical history has not changed since the last time I saw you, have you been hospitalized in the last year? Has anything changed? Any major prescription history since the last time I saw you? Any change in your driving record? Any change in your criminal history? Brett, everything is the same. And then what I'm doing is before I call them is I'm pricing it out with other carriers to figure out who's going to go ahead and give them a little bit more coverage or the same coverage, but for less money, as you'll see in the post. But you can't just do an annual review because you wrote one policy a month. I mean, literally, you're gonna to have to go out there and do some work, put the policies on the books. I've got over 3,000 people I can call go, dating back you know, to, uh, to 2012. And so you gotta build the pipelines. It took five years to build up that pipeline. Are you willing to put five years of hustle and hard work in so that you don't ever, 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 ever have to work a day in your life again? Where you're working it on your terms is what I mean. When you're waking up, when you wanna wake up, when you're putting your kids on the bus, when you wanna put them on and get them off. On your terms. 
because that's what it's going to take. But if you go out there and do it in 2019, you put the policies on the books, in 2020, you'll have an opportunity to do some annual reviews. So guys, have a great weekend. This was a very long running video. I think I was going to go this long. Guys, good to see everybody. Take care.